Hey everybody, welcome back to Napkin Physics. This is going to be the third installment and it's actually going to be based on a request made from a Reddit comment that I was able to get a hold of. But just a quick overview of what this is. I am a flight medic and with my friends I like to talk about physics and microbiology and organic chemistry and I like to uh, work it in to the medical practice. And so that's what this is all about. This is about getting physics knowledge out there to other medical professionals, EMS, pre-hospital, whoever you are, getting you to get some physics inside of your practice and just getting you to you know, think a little bit more in depth about it. And we're going to try to do it in less than 10 minutes. So the clock's ticking. Let's rock and roll. Just a little bit before we start up, just so you guys know, I didn't come up with this idea. <clears throat> this idea was actually brought, uh, I learned on Dr. Jeffrey Guy's podcast, podcast ICU rounds on inspiratory pressure, and it was over physiological determinants, and it was just amazing. Right here is where you can get it, and the exact episode. And this was the book that I used in context with that, the textbooks of medical physiology uh, by Guyton, and it was uh, just amazing. If you guys have, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful read, uh, what I like to do is get a cup of coffee, go to my favorite cafe, sit down with this book, and it, it could even be an ebook if you uh, want it that way, and just peruse because it's just an amazing wealth of knowledge. Moving on. Today, we're going over relief alarm pressure. And with a le relief alarm pressure, that's the pressure that you're going to hear on your vent. So say you are uh, in the field on, an, on a bus or on a transport unit and you just successfully recessed a patient and now you put them on a ventilator. We're going to talk about that PEEP or excuse me, PIP alarm, or the peak inspiration pressure alarm. And this is the equation to it. Now, I don't want you guys to worry. We're going to break this equation down just like we did the last ones on the other videos. And you will actually see that the other video ties into this one because physics is all intertwined. So again, if you guys are in a hospital or uh, on a bird or in a plane or on the ground, when you have a vent, you have this alarm. So this is how we're going to go over it and how we're going to break this down. So the first one, tidal volume. So this TV, whenever you see it, it doesn't mean television, it means tidal volume. The amount of uh, air that actually goes into your lungs and that's going to be over compliance of the lungs and thorax. Compliance of the lungs and thorax. We'll get into that later. Plus R, which is resistance of the airway, times flow. Now remember in the last videos, I actually said that flow could be either F, how I equated it, or Q. So this is the flow of the gas, okay? And this is all going to equal peak inspiration pressure. Now let's break this down even more, because like I like to quote, there ain't no magic in the breakdown, baby. Hashtag Sage Francis. Anyways, tidal volume. So tidal volume. Now, what are some ways we can affect tidal volume? Well, increasing it, just giving them more mLs, going up from 300 mLs to 400 mLs and upwards. And what are the, some ways we could decrease it? Well, decreasing that tidal volume. So now I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna push you push it one step further. Now I'm gonna say, okay, you know what? You are gonna increase your tidal volume, or excuse me, decrease your tidal volume. Uh, because it's an ARDS patient and you're trying to follow, follow the protocol with inside your hospital. What do you think is going to happen when you decrease the tidal volume? Well, it's up, it's up on the uh, 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 top here, so it's going to actually decrease your inspiration pressure, right? That's, that's, that's a relatively simple concept to grasp. Tidal volume is something that we get to mess with on every ventilator from ATVs to the most advanced. And it's just almost intuitive. If you take less of a breath, you're going to have less pressure, peak inspiration pressure, when you inhale, right? Going to the next one, compliance of the chest. This one might be a little uh, difficult to wrap your guys' head, heads around. And it was difficult for me when I first heard it. So when we think of compliance of a chest. Uh, one way that it was actually taught to me is when we have patients who have burns on their thorax, right? Patients who have burns on their entire chest and their thorax, that compliance of the chest, those lungs might be fine, but the compliance of the chest 
isn't a, isn't enabling it to expand. So what do we do? We go to the escharotomies. We cut it right here to increase that compliance. Because if we are decreasing the compliance, what is that going to do to the peak inspiration pressure? Well, if we in decrease compliance, okay, it's on the denominator. We're going to increase the pressure. Well, that makes sense. What are some other ways that we can decrease the compliance of a chest or thorax? Well, we already discussed burns. How about tension pneumos? Some tension pneumos. That will actually decrease the compliance of your chest and, and, and your lung volume So and your parenchyma in general. Whenever you have that air pushing against that lung, that's going to increase your peak inspiration pressure. So you have a patient on a ventilator, you hear your PIP go off. It, hey, you know, we're hitting 40, we're hitting 50. These pressures are getting insanely high. You should immediately start thinking, man, is the pressure coming from compliance? Is it a tension pneumothorax? Is the, is the escher is, is his burn needing to be escherized? It, it, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with this. Now, moving on to the next one resistance of the airway. So now we're, uh, we're away from tidal volume over compliance. Now we're just dealing with this multiplication. And the reason that these two are actually next to each other because they relatively have the same uh, outcome for both of them. We're, we're, you can also use poussets in both of these, resistance of the airway and for flow. But for resistance of the airway, let's think of some things that we can actually, or th that are some effects that decrease resistance, in, decrease or increase resistance in an airway. What, what, what do you guys think? Well, right off the bat, when I think of resistance in an airway, I think of a lung. And then I think of inflammation with inside that lung. Something that's making that bronchial really constricted. That's going to increase a lot of the resistance from air getting inside or out. Uh, another uh, f uh, way of resistance is ET tube size. So let's say we have a size 5 versus a size 7.5. Which one is going to have more resistance? in the airway. Well, intuitively you should be thinking the 7.5 because after we've learned from the Poussey's equation, it has a larger radius, thus less resistance. So what are some ways that you could think that you're having a, a, a big PIP pressure alarm going off and there's none of the other things going off. Well, what if you just tube the patient with a 4.5 or a 5 or some insanely small tube on a patient who doesn't really need that much or that small of a tube? That is going to make that alarm go off. What if you have a code recess like I, I actually had not too long ago and it's an asthmatic and they start to, you know, the, the asthma attack just keeps exacerbating. They're going to have a lot of resistance in that airway and that peak inspiration pressure alarm is going to be going off until you do something about it. Moving on. Now let's check out Q. Or remember, we can also call it F for flow, right? If we go back to that Poussey's equation. Now, what are some ways we can increase or decrease flow? Well, one of the cool ways is by using a drug called Heliox. And remember, Heliox is just lubricating that air to make, the, to make it uh, easier to go through any sort of tube. But what's a different way? What's one way that might be a little more common? Well, if we look at I to E ratios, remember inspiratory and expiratory ratios. If we increase these and we increase the rate that the air goes into our lungs and into our thorax, that will increase peak inspiration pressure. Right? So if we increase frequency, we increase peak inspiration pressure because it's blowing that gas in very quickly, creating more pressure with inside our lung and thorax. Now, let's tie this all together because you guys have been rocking with me this entire time. You guys are going to be experts on this. Let's look at it all put together. If we increase tidal volume, we're going to increase tidal volume. What's going to happen to our peak inspiration pressure? You're right. It's going to increase. Now, you know, if we decrease tidal volume, it's going to decrease. Now, let's say you're running a code and you recess them, but now they are having a tension pneumothorax. Their compliance in their chest is going down. Their compliance is going down. Well, that's going to increase their, their peak inspiration pressure, right? How can we alleviate that? 
darting that chest, getting tubes in that chest. And that was a Gleek. Moving on. Plus R, resistance in the airway. You're running an asthmatic patient, and they are having uh, increased resistance in their airway. They're having an increased resistance in the airway. What's going to do that? What's going to happen to the PIP? Well, it's going to go up. How can you alleviate that? Medications. Go, go through your entire gamut of trying to decrease the resistance in that airway. Now, flow. How can we decrease the flow? Well, remember we said it was I to E ratios, right? Say, we're, they, say they're again on a ARDS protocol and their I to E ratio is, is pretty high. Right? They're having a large, a lot of frequency, but this alarm keeps going off, and we've already settled through all of these. Well, what, what can we do? We can decrease the flow. But if we increase the flow or increase the, the ratio, what's it going to do? Increase the peak inspiration pressure. Right. So this is an easy way to, to tie this all together to this alarm, this peak inspiration pressure alarm, and also go back to our previous videos for the Pousset's equation. Right? So what I want you guys to do is just go over in your heads how to work each of these into your daily practice. Sort of quiz yourself. Man, you know, if I have this going on, how will it affect this? If this happens, how will it affect this? And every time you hear this peak inspiration pressure alarm going off, which is often for most of us, you won't become overwhelmed and you'll know how to mathematically deduce the issue. Now for the ending credits. Uh, you guys can vi view this video and all my other videos on emtransportradio.squarespace.com. You guys can see us on Twitter at emtransport81. On Google+, Plus, you can just type in my name, Charlie Alvarenga. Uh, you can email us any questions at emtransportradio at yahoo.com and see all of our cool pictures at Papa Bear Medic on Instagram. And remember that this was actually uh, inspired by the, that awesome podcast I heard earlier. But the reason I'm doing it so early is because someone left a comment on uh, Reddit and they said, let's put it to an airway. Let's put it to vents. So if you guys leave me comments, I promise you I will get try my best to get to all of your quarries and see if I can get some physics in there. Now remember, every patient is family. And I'll see you guys on the next one.